Hello, here's a, uh, another drawing video. Before you um, start drawing perspective and, and drawing boxes, I think it's a, a very helpful uh, step to, before thinking about all the edges and faces and points of a box, to, to uh, draw this, this wedge first, which um, I think has a lot of benefits. Most of all, there's just, if this is new to you, that there's just a lot less to, to sort of juggle and keep track of. We're going to be talking about points and how bigger, closer points appear bigger, f further ones smaller. And talk about how these are the same distance, these points are the same distance away. And these edges are equal in size. This edge, this leading edge, is, ver is going to be uh, appear vertically taller than these others. We're going to connect them with some horizontal edges. There's these angling back away edges that are the lines that are usually pointing to a uh, horizon line with vanishing points, but th that's a whole confusing subject in itself. And this is this is a handy thing to be able to learn. Um, it also, if you've never drawn constructive drawing, construction, drawing construction, um, structure and form, it's managing um, the the see-through aspect of it is confusing and which lines you're trying to make sure are sort of obvious and bold and which are um, softer and more fading into the background and and how to just man try to manage all that so it doesn't become too confusing of a mess and the more you do it the the better you just sort of get at looking past whatever construction lines you might be making um, anyways uh, planes vertical planes yeah I give you the wedge <laughs> so here's 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 a couple more finished wedges um, look this one is um, the horizon is is in the middle of the wedge these other ones these are below eye level and this is a little bit below and a little bit above eye level. Um, once again, that's a nice long subject. But here's what I think you should practice. Begin with just um, some sort of really light sketched in rectangle. Double check that lines, horizontal lines are horizontal and vertical are vertical. And these lines are going to represent the outer edges of this wedge. And this triangular um, prism is the more technically appropriate name. But I want to think about the fact that it, it involves these three vertical edges. These two are the same distance away from the viewer and this this one is is what I want to be closer to the viewer and objects that are closer appear larger. So I'm going to make sure that this edge is indeed, I like saying indeed, indeed I do, <laughs> is um, larger than those, as well as these points. I have fun with that. And just the, the beefiness of the line, if uh, that's a technical art term. 
But from there, what I'm going to just do is um, connect this leading edge with the other edges. the other vertical edges thereby making a triangle did I hope I said triangular prism and not rectangular prism because um, I sometimes make that mistake but there you have a wedge that's why I say wedge and um, I might knock back that see-through line just a little bit because that can kind of help it read a little bit better I might get into some um, shading things eventually but first let me um, do a couple more of those and I'm, I'm keeping I'm keeping it intentionally below eye level right now and just learning learning this process is is the important thing and just practicing straight lines horizontal and vertical so here's gonna be a sort of a different scenario starting with a rectangle that's a little taller perhaps I'll place my um, leading edge a little to the left this time. I don't think I clarify that I'm starting the leading edge this point lower than the top line of the rectangle and that's what's going to help it read as the whole thing being below eye level. So this one I'm going to try to make this leading edge it will always be at least somewhat taller than these edges if it's closer to the viewer but I'm gonna to try to make it not as dramatic as that one and it helps just to um, to understand that there's there's all sorts of combinations of these edges that are angling back but because of perspective they do eventually need to be angling in a fashion that they would eventually converge depending just how far out that convergence takes place depends on all sorts of different aspects I don't think my up and down lines were that up and down so just kind of going back and uh, strengthening things up let's see how about just bigger in general here Um, how about one that's a little bit closer to the middle starts a little bit lower for this leading edge <laughs> did I just go no <laughs>
So once again, I think this just sort of re reinforces a lot of the concepts of perspective drawing in a way where you're not trying to juggle all the things you are when you're, even though it's just a, a box that you're trying to learn how to draw in perspective, there's so many things going on as far as these angles being accurate and being true in a perspective sort of sense the points being bigger as they're closer, smaller as they're further. Understanding this edge that you wouldn't be able to see if this was an opaque wedge thing. And just kind of making it so it reads as something with depth. Gonna reinforce these closer, even this closer part of these edges. And employing a little bit of a atmospheric perspective. Anything that helps it read as the object that you want it to read as. Um, I'm going to switch pages and I'm going to do another one and talk about how this relates to perspective lines, angled perspective lines going away to vanishing points without having to have those pesky vanishing points and confusing horizon line. So I'll just start the basic one here with a light and sketchy rectangle. Place my leading edge. Those points will be bigger in that line, beefier. These points will be a little bit smaller. And the line's a little bit less beefy. Another fine art technical term. And the angles of these lines, as long as I make sure that this is taller than these edges, and that this rectangle is, is accurate in its horizontalness and verticalness, these, the angles of these lines will correspond correctly with how these lines would be converging to a, hor a horizon line and vanishing points. And that's a really handy thing to be able to, um, to practice and think about. I'm going to see if I can um, just do a really a really kind of quick explanation of that. The traditional way of drawing things with angled lines and um, a very helpful way of doing it is by having a horizon line, eye level, and vanishing points where all lines going, all edges going that way will lead to that vanishing point and the edges going this way will lead to here. But if, if I start drawing these, when I get, um, after I've completed this third line,
there's only one angle that this final line can be. And within that setup, it's possible to create a rectangle going from one side to the other. Hopefully this is somewhat accurate. I, it's, it's, I'm fudging a little here, as you can tell. I should have my straight edge. But I should be able to um, create various and sundry. It's not like that's a special, just one rectangle. It's just, it's to know that at whatever point that this edge would be that tall, it should be exactly that tall on the other side as well. And that's true for up here. It gets a little trickier. And I'm going fast because... But I want to sort of relate that to how, how that helps draw a, a, a box in general. Hey, perhaps I'll stay right here. <laughs> but anytime you're drawing a box, You should be able to, at some point in here, sort of lop off a, uh, a wedge where the lines, this would go straight across, this would come straight down, that would come straight down, and that would would equal up over here. So this this will be different for, you know, every time we're looking at a box, all these angles will be different. But for example, if this angle I had drawn a little more like that, then at this point, if I'm pretty sure I've got this rectangle with straight lines, I can say, no, this, this angle is going to need to go through there. So that's just going to help me confirm that these angles that are, would indeed be going towards vanishing points. It's a bit of a harsh box, but um, hopefully you get the point. I am considering shading. Let me see. I have lots of other videos on shading, but just because I'm here, I would sharpen my pencil first of all so it had a longer tip. But I would. choose one side that was going to be the clearly and obviously the lightest and then I would choose another side that was going to be clearly and obviously the darkest and then one that was in between uh, I'm going to make this one the darkest
some quick no-nonsense shading here but that's always fun to do and just sort of helps it feel a little bit more like you draw on something as opposed to just been doing these exercises so there's plenty more stuff to think about for shading that's a whole nother subject and I, like I say I have videos on that and check those out or send me questions and go practice the wedge and all sorts of different setups Okay.